hello guys and welcome to the channel today we are going to cover how to flash a chimney um, this chimney has very little water here we only have three panels that are 16 inches wide our longest run from the or hip to the chimney is only I think nine foot and so there's not a lot of water in this situation this is a 212 so the water is going to be running real slow so we're going to put flash in here instead of a cricket in the majority of the cases we would put a cricket but being that if we put a cricket here and the style of this house it would probably look uglier than if we just put this flash in and because of the amount of water we don't need a, a big cricket and a bunch of valleys to divert the water we could use the flashing so that's what we're going to do here on this standing seam roof i hope you enjoy hope you don't forget to hit that thumbs up thumbs down whatever you think let me leave a comment um i i enjoy your uh, your feedback let me know where i went wrong so i can get better or and don't forget to subscribe hope you enjoy the video stay tuned let's see what we can do This plastic is always in the way, but also helps us from scratches. I'm trying to peel it up and get it started so when we get it in place, then we can peel it a lot easier. We have the zip system up under this roof for a solid decking. This roof was already installed when they decided to put the chimney, so therefore, we're back here putting this in now. Got a clip in the way. Slide it up the Slide the clip up the way. Slow, slow. test fit um, make sure everything works we got to do a little trimming on these corners fold it around and then we'll put our sealer tape bugle tape and also our caulk to keep this thing from leaking so we got the flashing temporarily in place got it we've sliced the metal here I'll show you that in a minute. We set it up here, and you see these brick are uneven. We've scribed a line. I've also got a straight line that I made with my square before we started. We're pretty close to that, and this has to be cut square so it will fold correctly. You can't fold it with all those bends. But my deal is, right here, if you can see it, let me try to focus. We've got a big hole. And when I cut, when I cut this line, that's going to expose that hole. So, what we have to do is we need to put a piece of flashing here and we'll fill in that hole there with our new piece of flashing that will lip up under here. See, I left the extra metal right here. Because it's flat, that's okay. This is giving more metal surface to seal to. Alco ER3, a rolling bender. We're gonna loosen these. I got a depth gauge right here. I'm on one inch. Set that. Push them in. Lock them in.
perfect bends, just like on a break. But I'm wanting to make a hem out of that. So. It's automatically set with these. It's automatically set with these set screws for the depth that can go in the hole. I think I can go up to an inch and a half if I was to take those screws out. And if we was on the table, we could clamp this and fold it down a little better. Don't make it. one common mistake. You try to make your bend all at one time and bend this thing long enough, you'll put a kink in your metal. I'll just kind of massage it down, go back and forth. Make sure it's all the way in so you'll get your crease on the edge. And that's about as far as that bender goes. Get us down close to 15 degrees, 15 degrees or so. And then next, take your duck bills. These are offset duck bills also from Malco. So we just manufactured our own hem on site. Works good for little small pieces. Don't really think you'd want to try it with a 20 foot piece of trim. Um, but when you're making your own trim, you need to, you gotta work somehow. But the right tools make a difference. So I've made me this little trim piece. I've cut me a notch in my brick, folded me a little hem, put it on top, brung it all the way up, tucked it up under my cut so my other flashing that I have will come across and lap. And then just folded this around. And this kind of is a nail flange, screw flange. When I bring my other one together, I can attach them here at the corner. We still have this big hole right here where the customer, when he brought the brick through the roof, just cut it with a skill saw. So I can cover that with my flashing. I've cut me a little piece just to fill in the gap. Put some sealer tape here, both sides. I'm going to put it in there for extra measure. Got bugle tape on the bottom. It's going to lap. This is my scribe line. I laid it down to cut it. Perfect. So it leaves me a little crack, but it fills up this corner. Like I said, it's just gonna hold, it's gonna be able to hold caulk. Now I've got an eighth inch gap versus a inch and a half gap, I can fill it with caulk. Put my bugle tape right here on top, up under. Put some bugle tape right here on the bottom of this, all the way up in here. So, and this lip cylinder, I'll put some more caulk here later. And then I'm gonna have bugle tape all the way up here and around. So when my flashing's lap, no water should ever penetrate here. Shouldn't get here, but I'll have caulk for extra measure. Do your best and caulk the rest. So we've got bugle tape. This is going to go against the brick, down the front of the brick, brick, and go across my cut. That's where these two bugle tapes are. This bottom here is going to tie to that bugle tape, and then. That corner is going to wrap around. You want to set it right there. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and run some caulk against the brick all the way down this edge just for extra measures again. And this caulk will never be seen and be pinched up under our flashing just in case any water ever penetrates here. My man brought the wrong color. We're supposed to have clear, but it's okay. This will never be seen and it'll serve its purpose. I'm going to make me a piece of flashing for the other side. This is my original piece. This side's going to be four inches. No measuring tape needed. Use my square. And then I want to hem it again at an inch and an eighth. So I'm going to scribe that all the way across. Five and an eighth. Go ahead and mark four. That's where I want to bend it. Let me cut that off. Then we'll put the ER3 on it and bend it like this. Secret to cutting with snips, never pinch this all the way to the metal. Just do a half a cut, open up, slide back up, and just do a steady scissor motion. If you do that, 
you can run your finger down the edge no, no burrs and you got a nice smooth cut from this line up is going to go up under the panel so we put some sealer tape here down here we're going to cut the chimney stick it in just like we did the sides took this bottom and folded it around so this is what you're going to see coming past the chimney and what that does is divert water from right in the corner and brings it past three inches so the water won't be right in the corner <coughs> we've also got our flashing on the sides put some tap cons in it we've got a bead of tape or the bugle tape up under here and then turn up under our flashing then we're fixing to lap this big piece of flashing on the top and we'll use this bugle tape here slide it up under and that's what that line of bugle tape is we'll be up under this line of panels to keep any water from penetrating back up under the water should run out both sides and, and divert around described us the line so we know exactly where we wanted it put a dry fit on it say so you want the brick wiped off What in all the way? Yeah, it Got this right here, this little angle I showed you earlier that diverts the water away from the corner, gets it out on the panel and it's not right in this corner. These screws through the bugle tape, so we've got a washer up under the lap itself. So any water runs down, will build up here and run out here on top of the flashing. Same thing over here. So I do not have to worry about this corner leaking. There's very little water So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope I point out, pointed out enough of the techniques to show you how to properly flash this chimney. My way of doing it, probably some little technique areas that I made. Um, main concern is keeping the water out, um, keeping it sealed and not of a, a lot of exposed caulk. Caulk just really looks ugly. Try to have all my caulk in between my laps kind of hidden makes it look, look like a, a lot better job if you liked it please subscribe hit the like button if you didn't hit the thumbs down let me know what I've done wrong comment um, so I can get better but don't forget to subscribe 
and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.